Do you have an update on Galen? What happened with him? Uh, he tweaked his ankle, so Clark thinks he'll be be all right to play Saturday. I guess we'll see how it feels in the morning. Probably, probably won't practice tomorrow. We'll probably play Saturday. How is everybody else? Obviously, uh, Beetle and uh, Alex. Yeah, I thought Herb looked great today. I mean, he's uh, participated in just about everything today. Beetle was pretty limited, but practice, so I'm anticipating he'll play. And then Reese, Reese did a lot of skill work shooting, so my guess is they'll all be playing on uh, Saturday. It'd be nice to have everybody back. How difficult has that been in practice? You mentioned it Monday at Hey Coach of just how you've had like six guys healthy, but you got a couple more out there today. How how beneficial is that? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you'd like for all you guys that are in the rotation to be able to practice and be healthy, so hopefully, you know, we've got three games here and about eight days going into Christmas, so if we can get, you know, through these three without any new injuries and get those guys healed up over Christmas break. I think after that, it'd be nice to be able to have everybody that's going to play in the games practice. It just makes a lot. But it's hard to get better. It's hard to get your flow. It's hard to get your chemistry when, you know, three out of the nine haven't been able to practice. So it was great to have her back. I thought her was great today in practice. So it was great to have him back. Beetle gives us an energy. You know, the limited stuff he was able to do today. And, you know, Reese, hopefully we can get his foot healed up. and. He, you know, he obviously played really well for us the last game, so be, hopefully he could do a little bit more tomorrow. You'll have, obviously, eight days between games. Is there any benefit to that, especially when you're trying to install things and, and teach, that, teach these players? Yeah, I, I think it was good, A, to try to get a little more healthy, and then B, to, yeah, we really got to clean a bunch of stuff up. Our turnover has been a problem, so I think we've done a little bit better job of that. So, yeah, I mean, it is helpful to have that many days, but. Not going to have that that often. You know, you get it right around finals when you usually get it, and then over Christmas we'll have it too. But you're not going to be practicing that, that whole time. You'll take three or four days off for Christmas. But yeah, it, it was good to be able to get back, kind of regroup you know, on a two-game winning streak, and try to get some momentum going here. When you see the Marsh what do you see on? Yeah, I mean Stevens is a load. He's you know he, he hit two threes last game, so that hasn't really been his game. But he definitely more than capable of making them, but I mean, he's kind of that mid-post, catching it anywhere from 10 to 17 foot, face you up, blow by you, strong, post you, drive you. You know, so we're kind of toying with you, put him on, you know, one of your bigger wings on him. Do you put a traditional big on him? You know, he kind of plays the four for him. He can also play the three, he can also play the five. So he, he's, you know, there's a reason he's projected first team all Big Ten. I mean, he's been, Really tough, and he's so strong and athletic too. So uh, he, he's he's going to be tough. He's you know we, you know we've been debating what you do with him in certain situations, who you put on him. I think it's going to have to be a, a few guys on him, and you definitely don't want to get guards switched to him. The smaller guards, he's too big and strong for them. So he, he's a little bit different than anybody we faced yet this year. So I think you know I do think we got some guys that can guard him, whether it's Herb. Or JVN or Galen, I think those guys will kind of have to take their turn on a little bit. Is it easier to play a team coming off a big win, or is it almost harder because they're clicking? It all depends on them, to be honest with you. I mean, I'd rather not play them off a, off a loss than they're a little hungrier, but, you know, do they have their confidence rolling? Are they even better? You know, I hope it's more they're overlooking us, but I, I don't really know their team that well. They seem like they've been playing pretty well. I think the older they get, the less likely it is that they're going to be overconfident from a previous win. So they're they're an older group that's got some experience. So I would guess we're going to have to play them playing their best basketball. And that, that's what I would think. What was, what was your question? Just he's not the only guy you've got. To worry about. No, he's not. I mean, they've got shooting all over the floor. They've got a you know a lob catching big. They can really put some pressure on on your pick and roll defense. Just getting getting out of the pick and roll in a hurry and he you know sprints out of there he doesn't even set them I mean, he's a little bit more like Clint Capella where he's getting out early and looking for lobs so uh, you know we, we're gonna have to they get some scoring off the bench so they're, they're deep team they're good I mean they're they're gonna be right in the thick of things in the Big Ten this year. Does that, that size does that at all affect how you when you talk about um, the approach like to play the full guards a lot more than you know one big. Does that kind of affect how you that? Yeah, I mean it does a little bit offensively. It's better for us when we play small and 
to space the floor with some shooting. Defensively, we tend to be a little bit better when you go big, especially a team that's got, you know, two real guys that can score in a block, you know, so we're gonna have to play around with some matchups, some lineups, and see, see, what, see what we can figure out kind of as the game goes along. How much does it uh, change the, the preparation and the body clocks of the players to play in the, the afternoon rather than at night? It's a good question. I think we've got some veteran guys that have played in both, but we're used to practicing in the morning, so you know we'll been practicing in the morning. Now with finals, you know we had to switch some stuff around, but today we went right about the time we we're gonna play the game. So hopefully practicing at the same time as the game today, practicing a little bit earlier tomorrow will help us out a little bit on that. This is obviously the second true road test. You know, what do you hope to see differently from? outside of just playing better. Yeah, we talked to our guys about that. So we, we kind of talked the lot. The only true road game we've had so far is at Rhode Island. You know, and I didn't think we weathered some storms enough. You know, they went on some big runs and we didn't stop the runs. So I, I just made the point, like, you're gonna, we're gonna face some adversity on the road. We gotta make sure that the 8-0 run doesn't turn into a 14 run, 14-0 run, or a, you know, a 6-0 run doesn't turn into something. Like, we gotta, get some stops they're gonna make some small runs we gotta make sure they're small and then just buckle down and keep getting stops again so I thought we were a little bit younger immature with some new guys playing up at Rhode Island hopefully we've matured a little bit with even playing the Bahamas it's, they're not true road games but they're not at home either so we faced a little bit of adversity there I thought we bounced back pretty well against Southern Miss so hope to see some maturity and some growth and being mentally tough on the road with another true road game. Has Penn State had their finals too, or do you know? You know what, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Hopefully they're all distracted with finals like we are. But I'm, I'm not sure to be. I mean, they played during the week, so typically you don't play during finals. But again, with the Big Ten schedule, maybe they did play during finals. I'm not sure. I didn't look into their academic calendar, to be honest with you. That's like, that's like, yeah. <laughs> When you play an opponent in a conference like this, can there be an adjustment in terms of style of play, in terms of even reputation and officiating? Yeah, I mean, the Big Ten is typically a more physical yeah. conference. I was up in Big Ten country my whole life, so I've seen the physicality firsthand a lot. I think this is a really physical team, but, but you know, a lot of the Big Ten teams play physical and slow. Mm -hmm. They actually are one of the better teams in the country in a transition conversion rate, mm -hmm. which hasn't been the case for them a lot in the past, so they're getting out. I think they're 15th in the country right now and turning people over. So we played number one in Stephen F. Austin. Now we're playing one of the better turnover rate defensively teams in the country. So they turn you over, get out in transition. So we got to really get back. But then in the half court, like our defensive rebounding is going to be big. Their physicality with the post ups getting the old boards, we're going to have to match the physicality, which I think we'll prepare us. There's teams in the SEC that play real physical too, so it'll help prepare us for conference play. But yeah, I mean, their Big Ten's known for some physicality. You may have to deal with some some fouls that maybe you're used to getting called and they just don't get called. Like whatever it is, you got to deal with. We just gonna have to deal with it and figure it out as the game goes on. Do one more question, guys. Anything else? All right.